All right, I'd like to welcome you to this edition of EMU Today TV. Uh, so pleased to be back and uh, so pleased to have with me uh, Dr. Doris Fields, and she's the Interim Diversity Director, Chief Diversity Officer, if you will, for East Germany University. And she was on with us previously earlier this year, and, and uh, she had just accepted the role at the time at the interim level. And we want to give her an opportunity to come back on and basically get an update. Doris Fields, so good to see you. How you doing? Good to see you too, Mark. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing wonderful. So for those yeah. viewers who, who certainly uh, may have not seen the previous episode that you were on, uh, just provide them with your role as it relates to the university, and then we'll segue into a conversation with respect to getting an update. Thank you. So uh, as many know, I've, I've been at AMU for most of my adult life. <laughs> so I was 18 as an undergrad and a faculty member. Uh, in my previous position as Assistant Vice President of Academic uh, Services and Programs, uh, in February, I transitioned from that role to the Interim Chief Diversity Officer for the university. So I didn't begin my role until March 21st. So still having a good time. So that's a good thing. <laughs> you're, you're having a good time, but that's, it's a very serious conversation. We know that diversity, equity, and inclusion certainly have taken off over the last couple of years, two and a half years since the whole George Floyd situation. Um, at the time, you laid out some priorities back in March when you were on earlier. Excuse me, talk to us briefly about what your priorities were, and then how are we beginning to move towards those priorities that you established back in, the, back in March? Thank you. So I, I think my main priority at that particular time uh, was the DIE listening tour. I wanted mm -hmm. to get myself settled. I wanted to work on my staff because I didn't have staff at the time. Uh, and I wanted to put some initiatives in store. So I am continuing or wrapping up the listening tour in November. In September, uh, in a couple of weeks, I'm waiting for students to get on campus. I'm going to announce that we're gonna have a student only listening tour. So we have three dates set aside in September to continue that. And then in October, I will have a faculty and staff. And all summer, I've been meeting with people and talking to people and getting their viewpoints. So that part has been very, very helpful. In the meantime, I've had some other projects in, in, uh, in the works. I am uh, working on the president's signature uh, event on campus, which is Martin Luther King Day. We have uh, got that secure. We have a speaker. I'm not telling my secrets yet because I want to announce it to the campus community first. But we have our speaker, very, very uh, exciting speaker. So I'm uh, very proud of that. And then we're formalizing everything for MLK. I am also in the process of uh, having a book club for the fall. It's called The Pack. Uh, it's about three young men who uh, had a very difficult childhood and during their childhood they made a pact to become doctors mm. two became medical doctors one became a dentist and so what i'm going to do this fall is i'm going to open this book club up to the community i'm buying several books i'm hoping to pass them out and make some connections and we're going to have a book club and then we're going to uh celebrate that book club uh the final day of that book club uh with martin luther king day so very excited about that I am announcing, and this is probably one of my prouder moments uh, at EMU, the Judy Sturgis Hill Equity Internships mm. for next fall. That's very, awesome. very, yes, I am very, very excited about that. So we'll start the process this fall, and then we'll have applications for students. So what I want this particular internship to be focused on is equity and policies. And so I will be reaching out in my area, uh, Women's Resource Center, uh, LGBTQ, and the uh, CORE will always mm -hmm. uh, will all have an internship along with some other entities on campus. So my goal with this project is to work with students, introduce policy, and have them work with a staff, a staff or faculty. And I'm hoping that I, after I finish the internships, I'll be able to uh, fundraise so that we mm -hmm. can continue to have these uh, internships across campus. So very, very excited about that. So just a lot of stuff going on, making sure that I organize, get things done, um, and make sure that my area is more visible on campus. 
we, you and I have had a lot of conversations and be fully transparent to the viewing audience. I share my perspective on some things and you and I have had very, very open and frank conversations. And, you know, we know that it's been summertime. The students have been away from campus and they're going to be coming back by the time they view this. They'll be prepping to come back on campus. But let me ask you rather candidly, how has the overall acceptance been to this role thus far since it was March, uh, announced in March of this year? But also, quite candidly, we saw a report and I saw you being interviewed on the local news on Channel 4 out of Detroit about a couple of challenging situations since you uh, took the position as well. Talk briefly about both of those, if you could. So I'll talk about the first one, uh, the latter one first, uh, about the situation. So we had uh, what I would call a racial incident on campus. Uh, after the racial incident, I have been working with faculty, staff, and the students involved to understand the situation, to de-escalate the situation and come to a common ground. So I have been doing that and I just, uh, as you say that last week, did my circle back. I make sure that I circle back with folks. So I just made sure that I circle back with students to make sure that they were okay. I also had open, which a lot of people took me up on this. Uh, I had open office hours all summer. And so students that had issues or challenges came to me and we talked and we discussed some things and found some different pathways. So for that particular incident, I, will, I never wanna say anything is absolutely closed, but we have handled that situation and we have made sure that we talk to all parties in addition of me having open office hours all summer. And I think the students really appreciated that. The second, everything has been welcoming. I'm not sure if it's because I knew the climate already, <laughs> and I have been working at Easter, uh, but everyone has been tremendously supportive, um, helpful, uh, reaching out to me. What can I do? I've been able to uh, gain tons of partnerships and working groups. And so I think that'll be absolutely wonderful. I also have, which I'm so excited to say that I am partnering with the Faculty Development Center and I have a DEI faculty fellow for the fall along with the Faculty uh, Development Center. So I'm very excited about that. And I will also have a DEI athletic liaison as well. So I'm trying to, I multitask well. And, <laughs> and I'm trying to, yeah, I know everybody goes, you do all that. And I go, that's just a little <laughs> bit. That's not everything. I multitask well, and so I'm trying to make sure that my goal this year is to touch everybody, yeah. to provide information on what DEI is, because some people are still confused. And so yes. I'm going back to the President's Commission on their uh, uh, definition of diversity, equity, inclusion. So I keep everybody in the same place and we all have the same task. So I think I'm doing a, a lot of things that I'm hoping that at the end of this academic year, because you know you can't see things with diversity um, Im impact exactly, that by the end of this year, I'll be able to see a, a change and an improvement in what we do on campus. That's my hope. And, and that also leads me to my next question. So we know the academic year is from September, actually the end of August, until the end of April, of course, when we have spring and summer courses. But in theory, what in reality, the academic year is from the end of August until the end of April when graduation is. And I was going to ask you, so if you were to fast forward to graduation in April, and what would be the top two or three things that you would like to have been accomplished this year? And how are we going to measure that level of success to see if we achieve those goals? So my, my first thought is that I want to reimagine my area. Right now, it's called diversity and community involvement. And so I think that is a priority for me is reorganizing and reimagining what that office can be. Um, I, I say that it was in another area. Now it's with me and I can uh, do some different things uh, with the area. So I'm excited about all the projects and the programming. We're going to change in pro programming just a little bit and make it more intentional. Uh, revise all the programming. I think the biggest ones on my plate of initiatives is again, uh, Martin Luther King Day. It is also the multicultural graduation. It is also the Lavender graduation. It is also Black History Month and Women's uh, History Month. And so those things you will see something new because I have new staff. 
And so we'll be able to, to do some things a little different, a little fresher than we have in the past, just because it's different. Everyone, almost everyone on my staff is new. You know, and, and for those of you tuning in, uh, I will say this about Dr. Fields, Doris Fields, is yeah, she's passionate about this topic. Uh, if you go back and look at the March interview that we did when she first got the announcement, I know she was overwhelmed with support individuals, but if you look at the video, the actual interview, she got emotional about this topic because this is a topic that's very near and dear to all of our hearts, myself included. And it's important that we as a university with all the stakeholders involved, the 18,000 students there, we have the hundreds of thousands of, of alumni across Metro Detroit and beyond that we are still living in challenging times. And it's important that we have a leader such as Dr. Fields, who's, who's taken the mantle, so to speak, on behalf of the university to help get that messaging out, to make ensure that students embrace this critical effort, not just students, but staff, faculty, administrators, the entire university community. I know that I'm kind of stealing some of your thunder, but I feel I usually don't but no, and I, 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 I usually don't intone, but this is important to me, and I want to make sure I say that as well, but go ahead. No, I was just going to agree with everything you say, that I am truly invested. I think that one of the things that I may not, you didn't know at that time, is that my youngest daughter will be attending EMU. So this oh. is very personal for me. Yes, and she's on the EMU cheer team. And so this is an investment for me. And of course, I'm, and I'm, I'm gonna shout out, please come to all the football and basketball <laughs> games. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> please, cause you're gonna see me cheering, uh, supporting her, but this is important to me. And I wanna make sure that she has a good experience as well being a student. So this is this is top on my priority. I'm just lucky. As we, I can say. As we wrap up in, in about 30 seconds or so, uh, is there a website, anything you want to say very quickly in 30 seconds, and including a website where people get more information? I know that okay. our, our website is the diversity and community involvement, and we'll be listing our programs on there soon. And if you have any issues or any areas, uh, please reach out to us. They can also reach out to me, and my uh, website is Chief Diversity Officer at emish.emu. So they're always welcome to reach out to me for anything that they need, and I can clarify anything. And uh, Dr. Doris Fields, again, congratulations. We appreciate all that you're doing. Appreciate the update. Have a very successful academic uh, year and beyond in this role. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, what we're going to do is to show you a brief video of the multicultural graduation that recently took place on the campus of Eastern Michigan University. Then when we come back, we're going to talk about a $200 million investment in campus housing. Stay tuned and check out this video. Good evening and welcome to the Winter 2022 Multicultural Graduation Celebration. Collectively, both domestic students of color and international students represent almost 40% of our student population. We need a round of applause for that, please. You dream big and you did it. The university is very proud of your accomplishment. You are my future and I am so proud. My EMU journey has been breathtaking. I had so many lessons, received so many blessings, and had so much fun. I am truly blessed to meet people from all over the world and I'm glad that I could experience these cultures that I could never have if I didn't come here. So congratulations to you for accomplishing your goals and thank you for being there for me. You all have the stamina and fortitude to do anything you set your sights on. So use your powers for good. Give back to the places, spaces, and people that gave and continue to give to you. Please always remember to build up the community, serve, love, and by all means, stay determined and committed. And today, we won. We won together, though. We won hand in hand, arm in arm. 
You are about to go and influence boards, influence spaces, be on hiring committees. It's up to you to advocate for us. That's why you're at the table, to move it. I'm just so, so proud of you all in ways that you cannot imagine. Congratulations, class of 2022. You made it. We made it. All right, welcome back to this edition of EMU Today TV. I hope you enjoy the most recent multicultural graduation. Yes, students got together, had a wonderful graduation ceremony. My name is Mark S. Lee, and I'm your host, and so pleased to be here. And I hope you enjoy the conversation with Dr. Doris Steeles. We're going to segue and talk about campus housing. There's a major initiative, a major investment that was approved recently. And the person who's going to talk about it is Ms. Jeanette Zalba, and she is the Director of Housing and Residence Life here at Eastern Michigan University. Jeanette, thanks for joining me. How are you doing? Good. Good. So glad to have you. And so before we jump into it, just give me a very brief overview of you, your responsibilities sure. for the university and the office that you're, that you're managing. Sure. Well, as you mentioned, I'm the Director of Housing and Residence Life. I've actually been in that position for seven years, but it seems like just yesterday. And I oversee all of the student experience functions within the department, everything from the student application to students' um, behavior, to programming, to the resident advisors who live on campus with us and help support all of the students. So all the front facing experiences that students have while they live on campus, um, yeah. they're gonna experience myself or one of our team members. Yeah. Now, I'm a, I'm a, I was a long, I was a student at Eastern Michigan a long time ago, and uh, when I was a student on campus, I lived in a place called Hill, we called it in that day, those days, Hill Hall, yep. which is now Hill Tower, which is the home to the College of Business. So for our viewers, give them a, just a very brief overview of the state of the housing, the dorms, the residence housing, if you will, on the campus. Well, I think one of the things, I love hearing that you lived on campus years ago, and one of the things I often tell people is that not much has changed. Um, so if I took you back to your hall, um, there would be probably a lot of nostalgia. Um, certainly the, the framework of any of these buildings is gonna last for a long, long time. But really in the last few years, we haven't done as many upgrades as we would like. And so you would see a lot of familiarity probably in um, what these facilities look like, whether it be around flooring and ceilings and lighting. Um, certainly, we've had amazing updates to our IT systems because that was needed. Um, but I think a lot of our residence halls look a little um, tired, uh, but we're looking forward to doing something way different in the future. Which is a very nice segue because it's been a $200 million investment in a program called Welcome Home 25. What what exactly does that mean? I mean, first of all, sure. $200 million investment is a significant investment, but what exactly is that gonna be used for? And what is the Welcome Home 25 program? Sure, well, it means from top to bottom, all of our residence halls are gonna be updated. So everything from flooring to ceiling, to lighting, to bathroom vanities, it will look like a new facility in so many ways. The other thing that'll include, and I think students are really excited about this, air conditioning. Oh. Um, and I think we've been, uh, you know, you think about how warm it's been and the time is now, our residence halls, students move in in August, it, it, it is very hot. So you're gonna see um, new air conditioning in all those facilities. The other thing you're gonna see is two new residence halls mm -hmm. and those will be apartment style. Uh, and that's gonna be really fantastic. We'll have everything from, um, a one bedroom all the way to a four bedroom apartment uh, that you could have with your friends. And so we know that most of our bed stock right now are in traditional residence halls. So we also know the interest for students to have apartment style, particularly as they get older and they live on campus, they want that privacy. Uh, they wanna start living their life a certain way. And so having two new buildings added that are apartments, I think is gonna be just phenomenal. Yeah, and, and you mentioned two new apartment style residence halls. Um, where, where would those be located, by the way? 
So they're, they, you know, there's, they still could be named, but one of them we're calling um, Lakeview and one of them's Westview. So the Westview property is actually on the site of our current Westview uh, apartments slash townhomes. And that's over near the Convocation Center. Um, yes. You might have been over there, visited someone, but we are um, taking down the current facilities because they just don't serve our needs anymore. And then we'll put the new property there. And then the Lakeview site is going to be sort of next to the student center and mm -hmm. they will have a beautiful, gorgeous view of that lake, um, as well as a series of common areas, big lounges and a kitchen that will over, oversee that lake so that they can have wonderful events there. How are you gonna manage the initial demand for students wanting the new apartments? It's probably still too early in the game, but my point is, it's gonna be a lot of excitement and enthusiasm when people are gonna get there. Any thoughts on how that might be managed? Well, I think the first thing is we currently have a, a system by which if you're an incoming student, you're gonna live in our traditional residence halls. And then as you spend more time living on campus, you have the option to check into an apartment, to move into an apartment. So right now we haven't fully decided what that might look like, but I think that's the direction we're gonna go into. So our first year students will move into one of those traditional residence halls but remind, you know, as a reminder, those will be upgraded, air conditioning, new vanities, all of the, all the bells and whistles as well. So that we hope we'll move them into, hey, come back your second year, your third year, um, stay your senior year, you're gonna have access to those wonderful apartments. So that's how I envision it right now, because we'll always kind of follow the market. In other words, if, if more freshmen want to live with us than seniors, we're going to make that adjustment. And as we think about it, it's my understanding the groundbreaking is right around the corner. We know the school year starts up fairly quickly okay. uh, in the fall, the end of August, obviously. So from a timing standpoint, what is, the grand, what is the groundbreaking and the anticipated completion date as well? Sure. So we're um, actually going to start right in the beginning of September of this year. You'll start to see that groundbreaking. I know they're already doing a little prep work. Uh, mm -hmm. And then those two new buildings should be done by summer of 2024. So that fall of 2024 will actually be ready. Now, even though Welcome Home 2025 is the, is the name, when we mm -hmm. first started this project, we thought it would take that long. And, and working with our partners, they said, no, we think we can get it done by 2024. So by 2025, you'll see everything done. You may have done some preliminary surveying or talking to students or the administration. Yeah. Talk about that level of excitement that this is going to generate in terms of, of students living on campus and just quite frankly being the EMU student who happens to be in Ypsilanti on the campus of East Michigan University. Yeah. So first of all, I will say we did a survey a few years ago to talk about um, the market for this. And we had a number of students respond and tell us what they thought. And then in the most recent, in the last few months, we've done a survey that had 1,800 students respond. Mm -hmm. We've had over 140 students come to focus groups and meetings. We've also attended things like student government meetings, resident housing association meetings, meeting with the RAs, meeting with honors college students. So there's been a number of opportunities um, for students, let alone faculty and staff also had a series of those um, sessions just to hear what do you want? What do you like? What, what would be meaningful to you? Because if we build it, we want people to really enjoy what, what those offerings are. So um, there's certainly been a lot of engagement. If you ask me, what do I think it's going to mean for students? I think that these spaces are going to create a home. And I think once you can really create a home on a college campus for students, everything else becomes a little bit easier. So we know the value of home. We often talk about belonging. We know the, the sense that you get when you're at home. And if we can create that for students in a nice space, in a comfortable space, in a beautiful space, then we think they're gonna be more engaged when they step out of the residence halls um, because that's gonna benefit their, their mental health, their physical health. Um, they're gonna have great spaces to study and socialize, but also to have that privacy. I think that I mentioned in the apartments, you know, as you go older uh, as a student. So I think it's gonna impact uh, every experience that they have on campus. They're gonna invite their friends back. Um, I think they're gonna have just really cool spaces. Yeah, yeah. And as we're having this conversation, we're showing renderings of the facilities of this campus housing 25. Right. And, you know, even just looking at the renderings are beautiful and the lakeside view, if you will. Uh, it's just, I can only imagine the excitement and the enthusiasm going to be 
technology enabled cooling throughout. I should say a, you know, AC, air conditioning, other, I'm sure, uh, HVAC uh, challenges that will be overcome as well. Um, you know, and, and as I think about, you're right, as students come on a campus, they want that home environment, it's their home yeah. away from home. And it seems like the commitment that the university is making, you have got to be proud to get that support of the Board of Regents and your president. I'll give you an opportunity to I talk about their support as this project moves ahead, please. Yeah, I think um, we, ever since I walked in the door seven years ago, you know, there's been inklings of these type of conversations and inklings about, you know, how can we make this happen? And people would come and see the residence halls and see exactly what you would see, Mark, which is, mm -hmm. hmm, it, maybe this looks the same as when I went to school here. Yeah. And so we've been honored to get all the support, the, the chief financial officer putting this project together, purchasing, putting this project together, the support from the Board of Regents, um, even community members and other people, alumni met with um, many alumni who are excited to hear about the project. So sure. I think overall, um, people will think we're going in the right direction. And then also with all our upgrades in the academic buildings, I think we wanna see the residence halls as a viable part of this campus. Um, I think people have loved that this is a residential campus. And so mm -hmm. to see not only the new buildings, but our, our older facilities to be renovated too, we can't forget about them. I think it's gonna be really incredible. People are gonna be proud. I will be remiss if I didn't ask, um, with the you know, continued changing demographics and and the, the the population in terms of the state of Michigan growing, remaining flat, uh, or even the campus uh, situation, is there any anticipation that the, uh, the current facilities might actually close or be torn down as part of this process, or that's not the plan at this point? Well, we do actually um, have in our schedule a, a few of the buildings to be demoed because we want to right size this program and make it fit with what EMU needs. So there are a few buildings that will come down because we're building those new beds and it's 700 beds. So there are a few that will come down as part of the project. Um, and they've been selected because maybe the repairs or the facilities were um, yeah. older than others. Yeah, well, you know, as we, I, I want to give you a chance to put, uh, talk about the website where people can go and get more information. Sure. What is the website that people can go to, by the way? It is Welcome Home 2025, and it's on the eMish website. You can get all the information you want there, and there's even an opportunity to give feedback. Okay, and so as students come back, they will actually see this fall. They will actually see dirt turned over and cranes in the ground. Okay? Yep, and they'll see three new renovated buildings, three of our older buildings renovated next fall. Oh, which ones, by the way? We have about so 30 we seconds. will see Walton, Putnam, and Downing are starting renovation this fall, but opening in fall 2023. I will tell you are spot on. I, I did go to Hill Hall. I did this about old <laughs> about a year ago. It looked exactly the same. It, it was dated, but I will say this: you are right on. It brought back so many memories. I yeah. stayed there for a year, and I just sat there and I took pictures of it, and I actually sent it to my kids. Uh, one's living on the east side of Detroit, the other's living in Chicago. They got a kick out and said, that. Yeah. so there's your old home. I said, there's my old home. And to hear that the other facilities on campus are being renovated. I want to congratulate you and your leadership, leadership for making this happen. And we wish you nothing but the continued success as we look ahead to 2025 and beyond. Jeanette, thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, before we go, I just want to say thank you to all of you for tuning in. Uh, obviously, this is uh, uh, an important time. Students are getting ready to go back to campus. Everyone's excited. Looking forward to a new academic year. Hey, as an instructor, I'm looking forward to a new academic year. So we want you all to just sit back and relax and enjoy the next few days before you start classes. And when you do start classes, come back with that new enthusiasm. We will check you out next time on EMU Today TV. We will talk to you soon.